grateful for your invitation to enter your heart of love. As best we can, we come in. Thank you for receiving us. Amen. Before we go to our meditation verse, I want to just acknowledge the celebration of Veterans Day. We have a few veterans here today. They are, who are you? Brian, Edwin, Air Force? Navy. Navy. Ooh, Mark. Mark. Navy. We won't hold that yet, Chad. Navy. Flint. USMC. USMC. Sam? Navy. Navy. All right, anyone else? All right, well, I met a veteran this week, and um, I called him Joe because his jacket said Joe. He said, my name's not Joe. He got the jacket from Joe. Joe served in Vietnam with him at the same place at the same time, but he didn't meet him in Vietnam. He met him here in New Jersey. Uh, Lou was the name on the coat? Lou was the name on the coat, yes. Lou was in communications. So they don't, they didn't, necessarily spend time together because the guys in communications couldn't share what they knew with anyone else. So the point of it is they didn't meet one another and get to know one another until they were veterans together. And upon his death, the jacket came to him as one of his dear veteran friends. And I just wanted to share that because it's a great story about two people who served many, many years ago, but only got to know one another a few years ago. And, and that was just really touching to me. So I want to thank you for your service, and I hope that we remember you always fondly and with compassion and grace for the service that you have provided to us as a, com as a country. So let us pray. God of peace, we pray for those who have served our nation, those who remain with us and those who have laid down their lives to protect and defend our freedom. We pray for those who have fought, whose spirits and bodies are scarred by war, whose nights are haunted by memories too painful to be spoken of in the light of day. We pray for those who are serving now, especially for those in harm's way. Shield them from danger and bring them safely home to their family and friends. Turn the hearts and minds of all leaders, be they friend or foe, to seek the work of justice with the goal being a harvest of peace. Holy Jesus, Lord and Savior, may the peace you left us, the peace you gave us, be the peace that we now seek to sustain us. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. 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 Our meditation verse this morning comes from John's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. <clears throat> Hear these words that were spoken to Martha upon the death of her brother. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this. Let us meditate upon these words. Amen. Let us turn together for our opening hymn to page 368, My Hope is Built on Nothing Else. Thank <laughs>
all the work on. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the God, God is my strength and my might, my salvation. With joy we will draw the water from the wells of salvation, and together we'll say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. You may be seated. As we bow our heads in prayer, God of the new day, God of our salvation, we praise you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Renew our faith with a fresh, holy word that speaks to us in the deepest recesses of our heart. Be ever present with us during this time of worship as we turn our focus to you. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our second hymn, if you would like to stand. Mm -hmm. about to create new heavens and a new earth. 
former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a city of joy and the people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be an, an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat of their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of the trees shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hearts. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. They shall not be offspring blessed by the Lord, and the descendants as well. For they call, before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall be together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food, shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy in all of my holy mountain. Thus says the Lord. And the words in the 21st chapter of Luke. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned in beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the day will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be torn down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, Here I am, and the time is near. Do not go with them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be afraid. For these things must take place, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. Before all of this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defenses in advance, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your soul. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God.
someone will say something, or I will read something, and there will be an aha moment that stays with me from then on. Has that ever happened to you? For me, it usually ends up getting posted in my office or on the refrigerator. One of those times was when I was told, God doesn't call us to be perfect, God calls us to be faithful. This morning, in our scripture passage from Luke's Gospel, Jesus is asked a question, when is something going to happen? Namely, the destruction of the temple. He could have given the exact date and time, but instead, Jesus' words and reply are in the order for us to be ready. You must stay the course. God doesn't call us to know it all. It would not be good for us to know the future in every detail. God calls us to trust that God knows all. If we were to know all things, there would be no joy for us today because we would know the sorrows of tomorrow. There's a reason for us to trust and have faith. In this text, we find a subtle temptation that has faced Christians in every age. If we are not carefully, we can easily be diverted or distracted and find ourselves going down a road that leads away from God rather than towards God. This happened in Thessalonica. That's how you say it, right? Thessalonica. That's where we get the book of Thessalonians. I'm more used to saying that one. Years after Jesus died, the Apostle Paul had to meet this issue head on. It seemed that some of the folks there got so caught up in expecting and predicting the imminent return of Jesus that they had stopped doing work for the kingdom. And to use the scripture words, they had become idle busybodies who prattled about only about the future. Paul rebuked this behavior and warned against having too much of an interest in the last things, that we are diverted from the faithfulness to the first things. Paul advises, just as Jesus advises, stay the course. Now it has been said a person can be so heavenly bound that they are no earthly good. Have you ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. We know we are called to be about the business of the kingdom, and we must hold each other accountable that we keep a healthy balance between faith, trust, and knowing, so that we are not distracted by the worries and issues of the day, but instead work for peace and justice in the name of Jesus to make disciples for the transformation of the world. There's an old story about a warrior who was struck one day by a poisonous arrow. This man happened to be a speculative and con contemplative type of person. And so as he lay on the ground, he considered to himself, I wonder what kind of wood this arrow is made of. I wonder what sort of bird do you suppose the feathers have come from? I wonder what type of man shot this arrow. Tall, short, strong, or just strong enough? His comrades, who saw what he was doing, could bear it no longer, but cried out in frustration, for God's sake, man, stop speculating and pull out the arrow. How does Jesus train his disciples to recognize and avoid the pitfalls of life? His advice is simple. Don't look away. Focus on the mission. Profess the truth. The truth set forth for us by Jesus. Stay the course. Do not spend your time imagining of what is to come. Do not invite tomorrow's worries into today. Do not plan, plot, or prophesy. Do not fret. Do not worry. Do not put your trust in constructs, rules, or earthly temptations. Don't focus on the end. Simply testify to what you know and have experienced in the 
person of Jesus. Proclaim the good news. Testify to the identity of Jesus. Testify to his truth. Tell the story of his life, death, and resurrection. Testify to his message of love, mercy, and grace. Have faith and stay the course. Know, affirm, and believe that those who attack you, oppose you, contradict you, or disbelieve you cannot harm you because we serve a risen Savior who is with us in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, you can stay the course. Jesus <coughs> recognizes both then and now that life will be filled with challenges, troubles, lies, chaos, wars, and storms. The course will be rough, rocky, and turbulent. Staying loyal to Jesus will always be the unpopular decision, sometimes even the dangerous decision. But Jesus assures his disciples that their faith and loyalty will secure them eternal life with Jesus in the end if they will but stay the course. Imagine for a moment that you're entering a hall of mirrors. You know the path will be filled with deception. You cannot always trust your eyes. You cannot trust those who might be telling you which way to go. You can only keep your inner eye steady, trusting that you will find your way through and come out on the other side, and in doing so, persevere and stay the course. That is what it seems like for the Christians navigating the world today, a world that is filled with distractions, deception, and lies. Where is the truth to be found? How do we teach our children to seek the truth when lies are so widely allowed to be accepted as the norm? Many will inevitably give up. The path is unclear. Through the fog, it's hard to see the sun. You may need to seek the inner strength and power of the Holy Spirit within you to discern what is true. Close your eyes and trust Jesus to be your guide. As if, as your good shepherd, he will lead you to green pastures and still waters. If not in this world, than in the world to come. We who claim the name Christians practicing faith need to practice turning to our inner eye, that intuitive knowledge that faith affords us, that allows us to trust and walk forward with our eyes closed when our sight is unseen, unclear. Faith is not seeing the path that is in front of us. Faith is trusting that the path will be there when we dare to take that first step. Faith is a feeling which is a deep realization that lets us know that truth is not something we see, something we've built, something tangible, or something sure. Faith is knowing that God is there, that Jesus is there, that his Holy Spirit is there, and we can trust in his presence even when things get rough. That's why we can sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. The way we survive is to stay the course. Jonah learned that the hard way. After convincing those on the boat that the storm was because of him, he encouraged them to toss him into the sea, and they would be saved. And it took three days of discernment in the belly of a fish for Jonah to learn that he must stay the course and follow God's lead and do what he's told. Sometimes the world can feel as chaotic and frightening as, as the biggest of all storms. And today's storms are getting worse and worse. The destruction is overwhelming. 
We don't want that to be what happens to us in our lives. <coughs> we don't want the storms of life to steal us away by destroying our peace or by destroying our faith. We want to keep the peace that God offers to us, the peace that Jesus left with us. Sometimes we can feel like there must be a better way. There must be an easier way. And sometimes we would like to believe that those voices that tell us that their readings or their view or they know the way might be easier. But we need to remember to listen to Jesus' voice that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We listen for his voice. We discern to follow his lead. We remain not perfect, but faithful by proclaiming Jesus' gospel message. Jesus calls us to stay the course. Follow my lead. Proclaim my message. Keep your eyes on me, Jesus says. Testify to my truth. Hold on tight. Never let go, because I'll never let go of you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Can we say the same in return? As United Methodists, we have core values for our discipleship that make us who we are in mission and ministry together. We are resurrection people who are disciple-making people, and we do so by sharing God's love and nurturing each other, growing the faith in each other. Faith in what? Well, as today so clearly offers faith in our risen Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Faith by believing and worshiping a God who is alive, who lives and reigns forever, one who is present with us every moment of every day. We stay the course of faith by being deeply rooted in scripture, tradition, and taking part in the sacraments and following God's laws together. C.S. Lewis said that when the author appears on the stage, you know the play is over. And this, he states, is how he understands the doctrine of the second coming of Jesus. It means that he who has begun a good work in us will bring it to the best conclusion by his very presence. The concept of the second coming affirms that a conclusion will be purposeful. New birth. New life, all things new as the joy that will be set before us upon his return. We don't stress about it. We don't become idle and stagnant. We live each day as the gift that it is, enjoying the abundance of grace, hope, and love because of the sacrifice of Jesus. As we welcome others into the kingdom to do the same. His sacrifice makes it possible for us to forge ahead in faith and live to the fullest. We set our sights on heaven, ultimately, yes. But for now, we stay the course, and we trust God to know the plan. The last verse in our gospel text this morning says, By your endurance, you will gain your soul. Jesus endured for us. He warned against us becoming distracted and said the temptation would be to be lured away to follow another. This reminds me of the passage in John's Gospel when many had turned away from Jesus and he turned and asked the disciples if they too wanted to go away. And Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom should we go? For you have the words of eternal life. In all things, as disciples of Jesus, we are to be ready to testify. We are to stay the course through study and action. Do we pray for the condition of the world? Yes, of course. Do we seek peace and work for justice? Yes. Do we follow the ways of Jesus as set forth in, the, in his teachings, contained for us in the scriptures? Well, yes, we indeed should. Is our foundation that holds us firm in the face of adversity and trouble, our faith, yes. For it is on Christ, the solid rock, that we stand. In closing, consider these words of Hebrew chapters, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. <coughs> Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we thank and praise you for life. We know you do not call us to be perfect, but to be faithful. Send to us your spirit of encouragement that we might be steadfast in our love for you. We seek you, O God, because you have sought us. We find you, O God, because you want to be found. We need to be reminded that your arms are open wide with love, waiting for our return home. Help us to embrace that you are always near. Help us to rejoice in the mercy you have shown us, and in this season of thanksgiving, may we lift our voices in praise for all the blessings you have showered upon us. We thank you today again, Lord, for our veterans. We thank you that they have heard your call. We thank you that they have given of themselves for us. We thank you for their spouses and their families. We thank you for their unfailing love. Guide and protect us all. Send us out in the name of Jesus to testify to his gospel message of love, reconciliation, and forgive us. Encourage us to respond in mission and ministry. And may our Christian action of love and grace be received by others so that they may see Jesus in us, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to a time in our service where we want to present our tithes and gifts to God as God has blessed us and let us give it to him.
take in the beauty of creation, the love of your brothers and sisters, and the acceptance of Almighty God through the sacrifice of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.